Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. It's E-Rock Rods. We're doing a little review video on the TSG Pass Pro helmet, but we're also going to go through all these helmets that led me to getting the TSG. If you guys follow the channel, you know that I am a helmet advocate. I always advocate wearing a helmet whenever you're riding. And you know, this is just that's just a personal preference. For me, whether I'm riding around the block or whether I'm riding around the city, I always wear a helmet. Some of the helmets that I have, they meet different needs. If I'm riding around, cruising around the block, you know, I'll probably take just a regular bike helmet. But if I'm cruising around the city, you know, I'll take a, probably like a motorcycle helmet, a DOT certified helmet. We're gonna do a quick rundown of all the helmets that I have and then kind of go to the Pass Pro helmet. Before we start the video, just know that this is all of my personal thoughts and preferences. But with all the different crashes that I've seen lately, uh, the e-bike crashes, whether it was Sal or whether it was Felix that just recently happened, you know, I always advocate for wearing a helmet. What we're going to do is we're going to go through these helmets and kind of go through the pros and cons of each and why I, I kind of kept buying more helmets to find the perfect helmet that fit me. There's a lot of different certifications that helmets need to have. CPSC, ASTM, MIPS, uh, NTA, H776, DOT, all these different certifications for different levels of protection. I'm not going to go into the specifics of each, but I'm kind of going to do a quick run through on the helmets just to show this, the standard of safety that they offer. So we're going to start off with the just the regular bicycle helmets, and then we'll, we'll work our way up to the motorcycle helmets. And I'm going to go through the features. So as I'm going th through the helmets, I'm going to be splitting them into different categories. And I'm also going to go through a couple things that I look for for finding a helmet that fits my needs. The, the first thing is protection slash certification. Of course, the style, the weight and or comfort of the helmet, the visibility you have, the cost, and then also we're going to go through any of the tech or smart features that they have. Uh, like a smart helmet or if they're compatible with an application or anything like that and we'll start off with the Lumos helmet This is one of the first helmets that I got when I first started e-biking and um, It's uh, got some dust on it. I, I Like this helmet, but technically it's only a bicycle helmet So it's not rated for any electric vehicles that I'm aware of um, I backed this on Kickstarter way back when it has MIPS but it also has some cool uh, features um, and I showed this in one of my videos before it has built-in lights and turn signals and it has an application that you could connect to the helmet with and I did like I do like this helmet the style is a little bit more of the bicycle helmet style which I don't necessarily mind but I only wear this helmet if I'm doing like a cruise around the block or riding around with my son and I'm not going fast um, just because technically it is a bicycle helmet so that's the Lumos in terms of cost, I backed this on Kickstarter way back when and it was only like paid like 90 bucks or maybe 100 plus um, because of the MIPS one, they had the non-MIPS version. This has some cool features but I don't use it all the time because of its limited protection. I believe that they're coming up with a e-bike one. I'm moving forward, this is one that I actually found on Amazon. The reason I got this is because it was on sale and it's pretty cheap. It is another bike helmet with some cool uh, smart features. I think I got it on sale for like 50 bucks on Amazon. That's why I picked it up. I was like, let me just pull the trigger. Um, but it, like I said, it's a bicycle helmet. It doesn't have any um, extra safety ratings, but it has some cool features because it has the, the rear light. It has like a braking feature, but then it also has a couple other features like it could record. There's a camera up here, uh, take, take pictures. There's a built-in like speaker system so you can connect your your phone to the Bluetooth or you could actually listen to music. And then it has the, uh, I guess this controls the lights. The one thing I like about this helmet versus like the Lumos or the uh, x Nito, which I'll go through next, is that it has this like detachable um, visor, which comes in handy. I mean, yeah, I could always wear sunglasses whenever I wear a helmet, but it's nice when a helmet offers a visor, especially if you're riding at e-bike speeds. You always need some sort of eye protection. Even the wind, just getting in your eyes is just gonna make your eyes tear. But this is the, there goes that. This is the Craxis. I don't wear this one that often, um, just because I'm not necessarily a fan of the style. Let's just jump down to this one real quick. This is one of the first helmets that I actually got, and it's actually like a downhill mountain bike helmet. This one I liked. It's very lightweight, which I like. This is a detachable chin, chin mount. I wore this one for a long time. 
but I actually just I retired it because I moved up to more safety rated helmets, which we'll move forward to. So let's move to the X Nito. So the X Nito, I like the helmet, I like the style. What I like about the company for X Nito is that they recognize the need for higher protection than just regular bicycle helmets. They beat the e-bike certification, NTA 8776. They saw that bikes were getting faster. They needed more protection over just the regular bicycle helmets, which I have here. And I like this one because it's lightweight. So this one I wear regularly when I'm going to pick up my son from school and riding the bike. I do like the X-Nido and I would recommend this one. In terms of smart features, it has the light in the back, which has a couple settings, and then it has a light in the front just for extra visibility. And then we move to the motorcycle helmets. So the motorcycle helmets, which obviously, and I'll kind of go through these together, they have the highest rated protection, of course. They're both DOT certified. I eventually moved to riding faster e-bikes and I thought that, you know, having the protection of a DOT helmet was pretty important. And I like the styles of these. I wore both of these helmets for a while. This one, um, before I got the my latest helmet, this one I wore for a while. And I like that this the, the chin mount detaches if I need to. I like that it comes with the multiple visors. It has the outside visor and then it also has the sun visor so i like that i can wear this helmet day or night i like the styles there's not much that i don't dislike about motorcycle helmets the only thing that i really don't that i really dislike is the weight because they're you know more protected they're heavier if you're out on a longer ride your neck is going to feel sore after a while if you're not used to wearing motorcycle helmets and sometimes i'm going for rides and i don't necessarily need these type of helmets if i if i want to go for a shorter ride or just like cruise around I'm picking up one of the lighter helmets, like the X-Nido. I do like the motorcycle helmets. I still wear them. This one I don't wear as often because I picked up the newer one that I like. Uh, I like the style better. So this one met all of my needs. The style, the comfort, the cost. This is probably like less than 100 bucks. But I was looking for something a little bit lighter that I could wear kind of all around. So yeah, that's moving towards my latest helmet. The TSG Pass Pro Helmet. There's a lot of pros and a lot of cons with this helmet. So this is when we're going to kind of go into a deeper dive. Why I have a love and hate relationship with this helmet. Style is probably the, the number one thing about this helmet. The helmet looks really cool. It's super lightweight. It's probably, I don't have a scale, but it's probably just slightly heavier than the x -Nido. So it's very lightweight cool style it does not have any tech features but the, the pros or the things that i like the style the comfort when you're wearing it i like that it's lightweight but then the things that i don't like it came with an obsolete just d-ring buckle which is very cumbersome in my opinion it's, it's outdated they needed to do something else. I actually modded this myself. I, I cut off the, it came with like a little um, button. I cut it off and then I added a quick release helmet buckle. So that's something that I didn't like is the obsolete D-ring. I also don't like that it's technically not DLT certified, but it's rated for pretty much like downhill, mountain biking, downhill skateboarding. So it's gotta have some good protection if you're going at speeds of like 50 plus. So I still trust that it should protect my noggin, but it'll be lightweight. Uh, one thing I didn't mention or didn't talk about is the visors and the visibility. These helmets, you'll have a lot of visibility, but you're gonna have to wear sunglasses or something if you're riding at speeds because you wanna protect your eyes. These helmets, they have visors, which is nice. I like that I could wear this helmet night or day because it has the options of the dark visor and the clear visor, but it does lack visibility. So this little cutout right here, same thing with here. This here, you can't see like right in front of you and you don't, you can't, you don't really tell until you wear the TSG. The TSG has great visibility. And that's one of the things that I was very surprised when I wore this helmet, how much visibility I had in the periphery and um, just down in this area. This kind of, like you get used to these, don't get me wrong, they're still fine, but the visibility on this is much better. But when it comes to riding at night, this, I like the mirror the mirror lens, but it's just too dark to wear at night. So I either have to ride with a visor up and wear eye protection, 
um, but it does come with a separate clear visor. I haven't tried switching out yet, so maybe we'll see how that goes, but that's just another thing, is that you can wear a clear visor and so you can wear it at night if you really wanted to. I just haven't had the chance to. Oh, I forgot to mention, this helmet is like a fingerprint magnet. The helmet itself and definitely the visor. And like these little scuffs just like rolled onto the floor and I got these scuffs, so um, if you're looking to keep it clean, just keep it in a, in a case. It's gonna pick up a lot of scuffs real quick. Another thing that I don't like is obviously the cost. This helmet alone, 300 plus dollars, I think, 330, something like that, retail, cost more than this helmet, this helmet, this helmet, probably pretty much all combined. These three helmets is this helmet itself. But there's uh, things that I like about each of the helmets and things that I don't like. And this helmet kind of blends all the nice things that I need for a helmet. And that's why I really like the TSG Pass Pro helmet. Just because it meets most of those needs that I'm looking for. This helmet gets super hot when you're wearing it. Um, if you're wearing this with a visor down, which most people would want to do, the helmet gets really hot. But um, there was a little hack or fix that I got that helps with the heat, is that I got these little clips. I'll put them on just so you could, so you could see what they look like. Okay, so here are the little attachments that I was talking about. Just a little plastic pieces that help hold the, uh, create a little gap so it gets some little ventilation. Oh, one more con that I forgot to add, and I don't know if this breaks in after a while, is that sometimes this helmet is kind of like stiff, so it's kind of hard to one hand uh, open it. Like I have to hold the chin, then I have to hold the top for it to go out cleanly. So that's one more con I'll add to the TSG. There's two other helmets that aren't at market yet. They're actually on Kickstarter. Me being a helmet fanatic, I actually started, I backed them on Kickstarter. One of them is the Virgo e-bike helmet um, by The Beam. And it's, I'll, I'll put some things on the screen, some information on the screen so you can take a look. But it's basically following Ex Nido's footsteps in making a e-bike certified helmet. Only thing that it has on the Ex Nido, it's basically the same thing, it has a light, but it has a, a detachable visor, which like is similar to this helmet, I believe. And then it also has like a chin, chin mount. So it has, it, it adds some face protection. And then another helmet that I backed is the Unit 1 Aura. And I, the, the reason that I backed that helmet is because it has a lot of integration with its whole system. It's very, it's similar to the Lumos, where it has a whole system of um, lights, integrated lights on the helmet, and it integrates into like turn signals that you could attach to your bike. The one thing that it has over the Ex Nido is that it does have like a, a visor. So at the end of the day, it took me a lot of helmets to find one that I really enjoy. And the funny thing is, I was eyeing this helmet when I first started riding PEVs and e-bikes, but I was like, it is way too expensive. I can't drop 300 plus dollars on a helmet. Let's go through the things that I look at. So in terms of protection, it's not DOT certified, but I have constant confidence that it should protect from a pretty high speed crash. Um, especially after watching uh, Mr. Felix's video. So it does have the protection. Style, it's there 100%. The weight and comfort, definitely lightweight helmet. I could wear this all day, no issues. I would say it is very comfortable. The only thing is if you're riding in the heat and in the, in the summer, you're gonna have, wanna have some ventilation. Visibility, visibility is there 100%. This is, I have the most visibility with this helmet compared to the other helmets that have a visor and that have a that are full face cost that's probably the only con or one of the main cons 300 plus dollars but like i said you're paying for your safety basically and then it took me all of these helmets that i paid how much paid however much for to get to this helmet that i really like tech smart features the helmet it's a good helmet it just lacks any smart features and like i said they need to come up with a more up-to-date version and get rid of the old D-ring and have a quick release. One of my favorite things about the Ex Nido is the quick release. The quick release is so easy to use and it feels secure in place. That's one of my favorite things about this helmet.
So my final thoughts, there are a lot of pros to the TSG Pass Pro helmet and there are a lot of cons, but for me, the pros outweigh the cons and it took me all of these helmets to go through to find a helmet that I really like, that I feel like I could wear all the time. So my final thoughts on helmets in general, wear a helmet that you will want to wear. You don't want it to be too heavy that you're not gonna wear it. You want it to have good style so that you're gonna wanna wear it. Wear something that protects you. And like I said, these are all my personal thoughts and opinions. If you don't want to wear a helmet, you do you. If you want to wear a helmet and have style, the TSG Pass Pro helmet is definitely the way to go. It's costly, but I would recommend 100%. I'll link all these helmets in the description below if you're interested in any of them. But if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing. If you found this helpful, give this video a thumbs up. All right guys, thanks for checking out the video. We'll catch you on the next one. Right on.